Hey everybody, welcome back to day four of the Guilds of Ravnica set review. Today is going to be all of the red cards, which of course I'm very excited about because it's more blue-red spells matter stuff and some other Boros stuff in there, I guess. Anyways, remember, this is a limited set review. We're talking about draft, we're talking about sealed. I'm going to give cards bad grades that are amazing and constructed. It's because we're only talking about limited. But let's get on into the first card. Up first is Arc Light Phoenix. Three and a red for a creature Phoenix at Mythic. It's a 3-2 with flying and haste. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you've cast three or more instant or sorcery spells this turn, return Arc Light Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. <sighs> you're not casting three spells. You're, you're, you're just not going to. So this is a four mana, three, two flying haste in red, which is okay. That's a snapping drake with haste in a color that doesn't usually get that. That's that's fantastic. That's a, a solid high pickish card there. The return clause though, you're, you're just, you're not. You're not reliably casting three instants and sorceries in a single turn. So this is just kind of a middle of the road, three, two flying haste. That's it. We could have this at common, maybe on common. It's like a C plus. Maybe even a B minus, but uh, no higher than that. This bird just ain't coming back. Up next is the Barge Sarge himself, Barging Sergeant. Barging Sergeant is four and a red for a creature, Minotaur Soldier at common. It's a four, two haste with Mentor. I super don't care for Barging Sergeant. It's five mana for a two toughness creature. This dies to everything. This trades down so ludicrously low, just like all the other common mentors and a lot of the mentors period it just dies way too early likely only getting a single counter off of it this is basically a really expensive spinal centipede that we talked about yesterday too costly not what a boros aggro deck wants anyways five drops should end the game and this doesn't so i'm going to pass on this most of the time i think it's a d plus i just i don't want to play barging sergeant up next is Book Devourer. Book Devourer is six mana, five and a red for a creature beast and uncommon. It's a four five with trample. Whenever Book Devourer deals combat damage to a player, you may discard all the cards in your hand. If you do, draw that many cards. So uh, how many cards do you usually have in your red decks on uh, turn seven when this finally attacks for the first time if you played it on curve? I'll give you a hint. It's usually almost none. So you're drawing like maybe a card with this if it's getting through. And if it's getting through, you're just winning anyways. This is just way too expensive for me and uh, uh, really a way, way, way better fit for, for Gruul in the next set, kind of. I'm at a D on this as well. It's just way too expensive. Is it don't want it. Boros don't want it. This does not have a home in this set. D for Book Devourer. Up next is Command the Storm. Command the Storm is four and a red for an instant at common. Command the Storm deals five damage to target creature. Uh, so this is the Baddish Burn spell of the format. Ultimately, it'll work most of the time like the five mana black kill spells. We're used to it common, except that it misses in, in killing the truly massive creatures. But on the upside, it's instant speed on like those black five mana kill spells. Uh, all in all, this is probably just totally and utterly fine. The downside in reality is that the red decks will likely have to pick and choose their five drops really carefully if they want to play any. But in a slower deck, blue red spells you'll probably still be totally fine with this it's sort of like a b minus that in some decks you might just have to cut and in other decks you might play a second copy so b minus for command the storm up next is cosmotronic wave cosmotronic wave is three and a red for a sorcery at common cosmotronic wave deals one damage to each creature your opponents control creatures your opponents control can't block this turn this has a lot going on it's x1 hate like that black card that we saw yesterday and and for that part of the card i i similarly think i slightly prefer this in the sideboard until i see what i'm up against but i absolutely could see the argument for main decking it the second half of this card looks amazing for boros turning off your opponent's board and not even in the usual creatures without flying way but in the all creatures way is just going to be good game sometimes be aware you, you shouldn't be using this just to get in some damage i do see players sometimes with these effects say well I could cast this now and get in for seven and take them down to 13 it's a lot of damage let's do that you want to be casting this to end the game if you're not ending the game with this you should probably just hang on to it until later your opponent's not dead until they're dead because of the two uses here i think you'll probably just main deck this as long as you're aggressive if we're over in that is it spells matter deck 
I think I actually leave this in the sideboard until it's needed. No jump start. It's expensive. It's narrow. Not for me in that deck. But uh, otherwise, I think it's like a C minus D plus in the uh, the spells deck. Up next is Direct Current. Direct Current is one red red for a sorcery at common. Direct Current deals two damage to any target. Jump start. It's the worst shock ever. I've seen people mad about this being the worst shock ever, but. It's fine. It's got jump start on it. I, I'm fine with this for limited. We still have shock. We can still play with shock if you want to in other formats. Anyways, uh, yeah, it's pricey, but we're, we're still going to just pay it. That's uh, that's what we're going to do about this. It goes down a lot in value due to the tripling of the cost, but being able to turn a land into a shock for three mana later in the game, that's pretty decent. And unlike Command the Storm, this hits face if you want. And your opponent's just going to have to live in fear when you cast it early in the game. And then it's just sitting in the graveyard, and their life total just goes down and down, and the second they hit two, they know they're dead, and that, that's going to be scary. Probably just an all-around B-, minus, no higher, and no lower. Electrostatic Field is up next. Electrostatic Field is one in a red for a creature wall at Uncommon. It's an 0-4. It has Defender, like all walls do. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Electrostatic Field deals one damage to each opponent. Obviously, outside of a spells deck, it's unplayable. Boros is not touching this with a 10-foot pole. Maybe as a sideboard card if they find out that for some reason they're not the beatdown, but that's going to be very weird. In the spells deck, though, this is another very solid payoff, getting hopefully a good amount of damage through, especially with Jumpstart doubling a bunch of your spells. The second you think you're heading in this direction, you want to be grabbing these, and, and if you can get one, you're pretty happy. If you can get two, boy, you are uh, ecstatic, or I guess electrostatic. Up next is Erratic Cyclops. Erratic Cyclops is three and a red for a creature. Cyclops Shaman at rare. It's an 08 with Trample. It's a weird thing I just said. But whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Erratic Cyclops gets plus X plus zero until end of turn, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. I have no clue about this card. Obviously, it's a blue red spells payoff card. Obviously, I'm going to give it a try. But a lot of the spells that you want to be casting are low power, which means you're going to get yourself a 2-8, which is not going to get in for any damage. And it doesn't have flying or anything. It's got trample, but you need this to be huge. So the trick is how are you going to get this really big and get through trample damage with it? So I actually super don't know where this falls. I'm almost going to say this is a little bit of a trap. I think this is not what you want in the blue-red spells deck. I think it's going to be kind of like a, a, a fairly janky, like, C- minus or D+, plus, I think? But I super don't know about this card. It could turn out that it's actually awesome. It could turn out that, you know, on turn six, you're just going to cast three two-mana spells, and this will be a 6-8, and it'll be great. And uh, actually, there's a, a card that we'll talk about in just a little bit, where uh, you could potentially do 20 damage in a turn. But we'll talk about that later. For now, this card gets, I don't know, a D plus, we'll say? Could be anything. Up next is Experimental Frenzy, another really weird card. Three and a red for an enchantment at rare. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may play the top card of your library. You can't play cards from your hand. Pay three and a red, destroy Experimental Frenzy. This is weird but similar to midnight oil i think this card's actually just great i think it's just fantastic the play pattern is basically going to be play your first four or five turns of magic as normal if this is in your hand attempt to dump your hand as quickly as possible or at least dump all the relevant cards and the second that last super duper important must play card comes out of your hand drop experimental frenzy at that point you've put yourself into top deck mode however unlike top deck mode you can look at the top deck of your top card of your library see that it's a land play that land and then you still have the next card on top of your library you're actually drawing two cards a turn if you do hit that land so i think this card is actually good and then, of course, you know, if you have five mana and you unfortunately look at the top card of your library and it's your six drop bomb and then you have to draw it and it's abandoned in your hand, 
then you just bite the bullet, you pay the four mana, you blow up Experimental Frenzy, and then you play your bomb the next turn. So I think this card's secretly really good. I'm actually going to start it at a B, which could be massively optimistic. It could even be underrating it, but let's start it at a B. I'm going to try this the first time I see it, and uh, I, I think people are going to underrate this. So let's go with a B on Experimental Frenzy. Up next is Fearless Helbedeer, a much less weird card. Two and a red for a creature, human warrior, common. She's a 3-2. That's it. She is a vanilla 3-2, as we talked about, about that black vanilla creature. This is just a C-. minus. There's so much else going on in this set. There's so many good creatures. You're taking a hit if you're playing a plain vanilla creature. If you need a creature, I guess, but try to play better cards if you can. Cut this way, 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 way more often than you play it. Up next is Fire Urchin. Fire Urchin is one in a red for a creature elemental at common. It's a 1-3 with trample. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Fire Urchin gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. It's another common. Blue-red spells pay off. It's not great. The common ones can't be that great, but the fact that they exist means that the deck exists, and that's great. Um, it's a 1-3 for 2, which blocks okay. As long as you're slinging spells, this could attack and be fine. It's not going to be amazing, though, and you're not going to pump this up, you know, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times. You're going to pump it up once. Pumping it up with a Sure Strike is pretty darn cool, because that's plus 4, plus 0, oh, first strike on a Trampler for 2 mana, but you know, I, I think this is just fine if you are in that Is It Spells deck, so I think it's a straight C. If you're not in the Is It Spells deck, I, th I think you cut this a little bit more often. Um, so yeah, C for Fire Urchin. Up next is Goblin Banneret. Goblin Banneret is a single red mana for a creature goblin soldier at Uncommon. It's a 1-1 one, one with Mentor. That's dumb, but for 1 and a red, Goblin Banneret gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. I've seen people ludicrously excited for this card, and I'm not I'm not totally in with that. And that I think is just my whole deal on mentor is sure, if you attack with this and you attack with another mentor creature and you mentor this creature so that it becomes a 2-2 so that in later turns it can survive better and then you can fire breathe it, expensive fire breathe it to make it bigger and mentor other things. Then then we've got there. Then it all works out. It just took multiple turns drawing specific cards and your opponent refusing to interact with you. And we made the card good. Now, I think the card's fine because I think you will have the potential opportunities of getting this mentored into a 2-2 in many, many, many Boros decks. Just the thing I think people are forgetting is that your opponent's going to block things. Your opponent's going to have creatures and if they don't you're going to win anyways it didn't matter that you mentored you could have just sat there twiddling your thumbs and won the game but all of this hate that i'm throwing on this is just to, to talk people down from giving this a b or something i'm not in the b range for this i think i'm in the c plus range for this as long as you are a heavy mentor deck i'm not putting this in my blue red spells deck and a big part of that is because this comes down on one and so on turn two, you get to attack with it. You still don't get to mentor it, but maybe you get to plus two, plus O it. And then on turn three, maybe you get to mentor it. Um, but I, I, I'm at a C plus on this. I don't think it's as ludicrously amazing as I've been hearing. I, I've heard people just utterly saying this is an incredible card, and I do not agree. I don't want my cards to be incredible if I also draw other cards and specific cards and play them in certain ways and have everything work out perfectly. That's not how I like to play Magic. I want to play cards that are good right from the get-go. Up next is Goblin Crater Maker. Goblin Crater Maker is one in a red for a creature Goblin Warrior at Uncommon. It's a 2-2. Pay one generic mana and sacrifice it to do one of two things. Deal two damage to target creature, or destroy target colorless non-land permanent. There is basically one colorless non-land permanent that I would ever consider using this and playing this in order to blow up. And of course, we'll talk about that in a few days. It's called Rampaging Monument. Gatekeeper Gargoyle potentially could be a target that I want to kill. And beyond that, I, I just don't think I care about any other colorless permanents in this set. This is definitely a constructed plant. As is, it's a 2-2 two -two for 2. It's, it's still just a 2-2 two -two for 2. And that first ability is pretty darn good. That first ability, as we talked about, is going to kill half the format. Or technically just under half the format, like 47% of the format is 2 power or less. 
So this is actually really, really, really good. This is better than a bear with an upside. This is a bear with an upside. So this is more like a B minus, I think. Um, I, I, I love this as a 2-2 two, two for two, and I love that I can kill a ton of creatures, and that threat of activation, your opponent's not gonna wanna block some other 2-2 two, two with their 4-4 four, four and just have this kill it. I mean, they might, they still two for one you, but still, this card looks fantastic. Just that second clause is next to meaningless in the format. So I'm going to be minus on Goblin Crater Maker. I think it's a really good little goblin. Up next is Goblin Locksmith. Goblin Locksmith is one and a red for a creature Goblin Rogue at common. It's a 2-1. Whenever Goblin Locksmith attacks, creatures with Defender can't block this turn. It's a filler card. It's a Goblin Piker in a massive number of games. Yes, there are a relatively large number of defenders compared to most limited formats, but I don't think many of them are actually playable. But I think most red aggro decks are going to be okay playing this anyways, so those rare times where it becomes relevant, it's going to be really nice, but there, there's no reason to ever actually consider that in part of the grade. So I'm going to go with just a filler C on Goblin Locksmith. Play it, don't play it, you're going to be fine either way. Up next is Gravitic Punch. Gravitic Punch is three and a red for a sorcery at common. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target player. Not any target, not creature, player. And it's got jumpstart, so you can do it all again. A card that just deals some amount of damage to a player. You know what I think of those, right? That's right. I think this is totally okay. Surprise. Well... Again, this is my love of the blue-red spells deck speaking here. This is a spell that will trigger your Spells Matters cards. So Electrostatic Field is going to ping, so that's one extra point of damage. This is going to, um, you know, give plus one, plus O oh to your Fire Urchant. This is going to give plus four, plus O oh to that Erratic Cyclops. And this is the 20 damage that I talked about. If you have eight mana and you cast this, and then you recast this, that is a 4-8 Cyclops punching your opponent, followed by an 8-8 Cyclops punching your opponent. That's 12 damage, and an 8-8 Trample Cyclops coming in. That's 20 damage in one turn. That's magical Christmas land and 8 mana, and you've probably won that game anyways, but I think that's pretty nifty. So, anyways, this card... Uh, uh, I think I might slightly be okay with it. And that kind of scares me that I'm saying this about this card. Again, you have to be blue-red spells. You have to have a number of ways to uh, uh, get spells triggers off of this. If you are just casting this for some amount of damage and nothing else is going on, it's not going to feel nearly as good. So, realistically, this is probably like an F. I'm actually going to draft this more than I've ever drafted an effect like this before, if I'm in that blue-red spells deck, where I think this is actually a little bit more like a C minus or maybe even a C. It just scales so well with things like Erratic Cyclops and with uh, uh, Crackling Drake and etc. So, really weird. I'm going to try drafting this card as a C. It might just be, and probably is, an F. Hellkite Whelp is up next. Hellkite Whelp is four and a red for a creature dragon at uncommon. It's a 3-3 three, three with flying. Whenever Hellkite Whelp attacks, it deals one damage to target creature defending player controls. Even more. X1 hate. Five mana 3-3 three, three flyer is about standard for red. You know, it, it took a mythic to be a 3-2 flyer for four. Uh, and pinging on the attack is decent for all the X1s that are running around, at least before they get mentored anyways. More of an is it card just because five could be slightly cost for Boros, but I think they still might just be okay with it as a 3-3 three, uh, three, three flyer finisher. But I'm happy with this as a B-, minus. but a B- minus that you might side out or you might not play if it's just too slow and not quite hitting anything. So B- minus for Hellkite Whelp. Up next is Inescapable Blaze. Inescapable Blaze is four red red for an instant at uncommon. This spell can't be countered. That doesn't really matter. Inescapable Blaze deals six damage to any target. So it's uh, very, very, very expensive. We had five for five damage, so six for six damage makes sense, I suppose. Unable to be countered is not terribly applicable and limited, so whatevs, but this being uh, a lava axe at instant speed when you want it, 
and the removal the rest of the time is pretty awesome. Like Govern the Storm, some red decks will just not want to touch this, namely the Boros decks, but other decks are going to be pretty happy with it. I think I might first pick this if the pack was missing the usual bomb and better removal suspects, but at four red red, I think it is a very weak first pick. Um, but in, in the blue-red spells decks, I'm going to be pretty happy playing this. Just make sure that you aren't trying to play this in your 1-drop, uh, 2-drop, 3-drop aggro decks. So B for Inescapable Blaze where appropriate. Up next is Lava Coil, which puts Inescapable Blaze to shame. 1 and a red for a sorcery at Uncommon. Lava Coil deals 4 damage to target creature. If that creature would die this turn, exile it instead. This card's great. It's 100% solid red removal. It misses on hitting the opponent. It misses on being instant speed, but it's 2 mana. I'll take it. I'll take 5 of them. Easy B+. Plus. Should hit a pretty sizable amount of the format. Uh, this is definitely a first pick in a bunch of packs. So B+, plus for Lava Coil. Up next is Legion Warboss. Legion Warboss is two and a red for a creature goblin soldier at rare. It's a 2-2 with Mentor. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token. That token gains haste until end of turn and attacks this combat. If able, it doesn't always have to attack if it survives that first time, but it does have to attack the first time. This is interesting. It's obviously drawing comparisons to Goblin Rabble Master. Three mana for a 2-2 two, two plus the 1-1 one, one haste if you play it pre-combat, but that 1-1 one, one might just bite it again. The big warning for all the people who think Mentor is broken or busted or insane, your opponent's going to block and you're attacking with 2-2s, two or 1-1s one, in this case. They're gonna die a lot. But anyways, should we get past that, if you can come in with the war boss on future turns, turning those 1-1s one into 2-2s two is going to be pretty darn decent. I think this has the potential to be quite explosive, but I also think it has the potential to be just completely blanked by any deck with some semblance of toughness and a little tiny bit of power. This will be extremely format dependent, I think, so I'm ready to be massively wrong on this, but I'm going to start a little bit on the lower end towards a B-, and I'm going to give it room to grow as I play the format. Up next is Maniacal Rage. Maniacal Rage is one in a red for an enchantment aura at common enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and can't block. Uh, getting no evasion makes me not even slightly excited for this. Sure, you can throw this on your healer's hawk, and if you're lucky, do some damage, but I am just going to blow you out with the 70,000 unexplained disappearances that I'm going to draft. This card is mediocre and the exact type of aura that I think is unplayable and statistically isn't worth it, but people will play it and win, but they'll forget all the times they get blown out by it, which will be more often than not. So D- minus for Maniacal Rage. Don't play it. Maximize Velocity is up next. Maximize Velocity is a single red mana for a sorcery at common. Target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains haste until end of turn. And it's got Jumpstart, so you can do it all again. Plus one, plus one, and haste uh, for one mana and a card is the big important thing here. And yes, it has Jumpstart, but that's going to cost you another card because you have to discard it. Um, just doesn't make me want to play this. I've got it at a D minus. If I'm really desperate for cheap spells for the Spells Matters deck, I guess I can play this just like uh, Maximize Altitude. But otherwise, no real interest in this. D minus for Maximize Velocity. There's just better cards out there. Up next is Ornery Goblin. Ornery Goblin is one and a red for a creature goblin warrior at common. It's a 2-1. Whenever Ornery Goblin blocks or becomes blocked by a creature, Ornery Goblin deals one damage to that creature. This used to be called uh, Ashmouth Hound back in Innistrad, and it was surprisingly decent. This cannot be chumped by X1s. They just die. And it trades with the X2s. Not only that, but on defense, those X1s can't attack you because he just walks in front and zaps them and they're dead and he's fine don't sleep on this card it's not a super high pick it's mid pack still but it is a very very easy c plus play this card don't let me see you cutting this up next is risk factor Get your YouTube comment fingers ready. Risk Factor is two and a red for an instant at rare. Target opponent may have Risk Factor deal four damage to them. If that player doesn't, you draw three cards. Jumpstart. This is a Punisher card. This is a card where you play the card and your opponent decides what happens 
That is not something you generally want to play. Dealing four damage to their face isn't really a card that I would play. I don't typically like to play a Lava Axe. I'm not, I'm not really going to play a card that does that. Drawing three cards in red is incredible. But guess what? Your opponent is barely ever going to let you just draw three cards. They're not going to let you do that. They're going to take four all day, every day. But what if they can't? What if they're almost dead? Well, they're almost dead. Just just, just keep attacking. Play a, play a Command the Storm. Play a... Play a, 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 some, play anything. Don't play this. This card is bad. Getting to do a bad thing twice because it has jumpstart is just as awful. Browbeat, which of course this card is very similar to, was not good. And this card is not good either. F for risk factor. Up next is Rubble Belt Boar. Rubble Belt Boar is uh, apparently the predator, it looks like. Three and a red for a creature boar at common. When Rubble Belt Boar enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. Probably, presumably, hopefully not itself. Um, I, I, this is fine filler. I think I actually just prefer Cavalry Drillmaster than a four mana three, three that gives the plus two, plus oh, but hey, you need creatures. You got a creature. Uh, it's a C. You cut it if you can. You leave it in if you can't. That's really about it. Th th there's just not that much else going on here. Obviously, interacts well with Mentor because now you have a big Mentor that can perhaps uh, uh, mentor something slightly less big and make it bigger. But again, we're, we're starting to talk multiple cards, multiple cards, multiple cards, yada, yada, yada. In a vacuum, I've got this just at a C. Up next is my preview card, Runaway Steamkin. I got to reveal this to the world. One in a red for a creature elemental at rare. It's a 1-1. One, one. Whenever you cast a red spell, if Runaway Steamkin has fewer than three plus one plus one counters on it, put a plus one plus one counter on Runaway Steamkin. Remove three plus one plus one counters from Runaway Steamkin. Add red, red, red. As I said, I'm psyched to throw this in my Red Deck Wins Canlander deck. In Limited, I'm a little bit less psyched. You're just not going to draft a mono red deck. I'm, I'm going to say it's impossible, in fact, because there's so much multicolor. There's so much gold cards. There's only 30 red cards in the set, mono red cards anyways. But, of course, if you are in a red deck that has some is it cards, those is it cards are red as well, so they still count. But I just don't know how much you're going to pull out of this. I do want to give it a try. It might actually be decent in uh, in, in Boros because you can mentor this card fairly well and your red mentor creatures and boros creatures and spells will make this bigger and and it might actually be better there i don't know where this is going to fall and i don't know how good it's going to be i'll certainly give it a try i feel sort of obligated to with it being my preview card but i'm gonna start it out at like i think a c Let's go with a C, I guess. But again, it could actually turn out to be like a C plus or a B minus sometimes, and it could actually just turn out to be like a C minus or a D or something. Let's go with the middle of the road C. I don't, I, I have to play with it. I, I have to figure this out. And I, I just, I don't quite know at the start where it's gonna fall. So let's go with a C and let it fall up or down. Up next is Smelt Ward Minotaur. Smelt Ward Minotaur is two and a red for a creature Minotaur Warrior at Uncommon, it's a two, three. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, target creature and opponent controls can't block this turn. It's another okay payoff for the blue-red spells deck. A 2-3 three for 3 is a little bit below rate. I do prefer the 3 twos, but turning off blockers is a way to get some damage through, especially for your flyers. If you have them getting pumped, your wee dragonauts and your crackling drakes. Totally fine. Not a super high pick, though, but the second I'm in this deck, I do want one. Boros, I think, could also maybe utilize this you cast something like a sure strike or a combat trick and that turns off a blocker and that, that's going to let you attack in and uh, you know mentor this and you get yourself a three four so i think boros could actually be pretty happy with this as well uh, don't discount this if you're in boros but i'm going to go with a c plus I, I think it's just a little bit better than uh than average but not by much up next is Sure Strike, which I've talked about a whole lot. Surprise, it's in the set. Sure Strike is one in a red for an instant at common. Target creature gets plus three plus zero oh, and gains first strike until end of turn. I talk about this a card a lot when I talk about combat tricks because it might be one of my favorites. It's a big power boost. It's first strike, meaning it doesn't matter that there's not a toughness boost, and it's cheap. 
And that's basically my recipe for a perfect, powerful combat trick. You are typically going to kill next to anything in the format and save your creature. I'll play Sure Strikes way more often than not if I have one, and it takes a lot of amazing playable cards for me to actively cut that first one. Still, a very, very, very low pick in the draft, but I do rate Sure Strike as a C+. It's probably just one of my favorite common uh, combat tricks. Our second last card is Torch Courier. Torch Courier is a single red mana for a creature goblin at common. It's a 1-1 with haste. Sacrifice Torch Courier. Another target creature gains haste until end of turn. I don't really have much interest in this. 1-1s one for 1. Not generally good. We've talked about that a lot. Sacking it someday to give something else haste. Sure, randomly that'll be good. And other times it, it'll it just not even be relevant. Mentor target, yada, yada, yada. Just just play better cards. This, this, this card's not something I'm terribly excited for. I've got it in a D. I'm going to try my best to just not play this card. I don't want to play it. D for Torch Career. And our final card of the set is Wojek Bodyguard. Wojek Bodyguard is two and a red for a creature human soldier at common. It's a 3-3 three, three with Mentor. Wojek Bodyguard can't attack or block alone. So this is this is this is interesting. Um, we haven't really seen this effect on a three drop before, at least not that I have in my memory. I'm sure we have, and somebody will correct me below. Uh, but usually this is on a really cheap creature, like a one drop or maybe a two drop. Now this is a three three for three. It is it is just a pure vanilla three three, which is usually pretty good. N not being able to attack by itself or even block by itself is a definite downside. The Boros plan, though, of course, is to never have just one creature by themselves. Then your mentor is not working. Then nothing is really working out for you. It's going to happen sometimes, and this card's going to suck when that happens. But I think this card is probably just totally fine in the mentor deck. You got to make sure that you have sort of a, a mana curve plus a power curve going on with it. But this could definitely just help uh, uh, mentor those two twos up to the three three level. So I think this is going to be like a C, maybe a C plus. Um, C plus feels too high because of those times where this will be pretty difficult to uh, to block with. So I'm going to keep this at a C. I'm not quite going to go up to the C plus range, but I think in the mentor deck this is totally going to be fine, and uh, that downside is just not going to matter because you're just going to be turning several things sideways all the time. So anyways, that's going to wrap it up for the red set review. Uh, red looks good. Uh, there's, there's nothing that stands out as being like, oh man, that's amazing level, uh, but there's a lot of fun stuff that I do want to try. A lot of surprise spells that I want to try. I definitely want to try out Experimental Frenzy and Erratic Cyclops and my preview card, Runaway Steamkin. There's a bunch of stuff that I want to fiddle around with here. And of course, for those who are more Boros inclined, there's some guys that attack, I guess. Anyways, let me know what you're excited about in red, what you agree with, what you disagree with. Chat with me, chat with each other in the comments down below. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at TheManaLeak. That's L-E-E-K, like the vegetable, not the card. You can also find me at Facebook.com slash TheManaLeak, Twitch.tv slash TheManaLeak, and Patreon.com slash TheManaLeak. If you like the content, click that thumbs up button, click subscribe if you want to see more, share it with your friends, get it out there. And if you do have questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you all next time for the Green Set Review.